Over the past quarter of a century, thousands of Moravias have traveled virtually millions of river miles, from China's Yangtze to West Virginia's Gauley, from Chile's Bio Bio to Alaska's Tachinchini. Moravia was founded by inventor Gordon Holcomb, who was encouraged by local river runners to apply his experience building inflatable products for the aviation and space industries towards the building of a better raft. The name Moravia sprang from this combination of fields, Mar for marine and Avia for aviation. In 1975, Moravia initiated development of a revolutionary concept, a self-bailing floor with drop stitch construction this was the beginning of a far better performing raft with outstanding maneuverability. The 70s also marked the beginning of Moravia's ongoing work for the Navy SEAL teams and the U.S. Special Operations Command with the development of a fast combat raiding craft. In 1986, we solved a long time rafting problem, glued seams. Moravia pioneered thermofused seam construction which simply eliminated seam problems. Three years later, we combined thermofused seam construction with urethane seamless encapsulation for unsurpassed durability. And in 1995, Moravia introduced new high-tech Class 6 fabric, the toughest boat fabric in the industry. At Moravia, our boat designs do not begin in our newly expanded Idaho factory and showroom. They come from boaters like you. Our boats are born from discussions around the campfire and at takeouts around the world. Welcome to Moravia and the growing river family of Moravia owners. For the next few minutes, we'll be sharing with you information on how your boat was built and how to use and care for it. You'll be getting a look at the Moravia showroom and our state-of-the-art manufacturing facility. If your river travel should bring you to Idaho, stop by, we'll give you a personal tour. Over the years, you've seen us on the big screen with Indiana Jones and on the River Wild. Moravia has also built high-performance boats for the Navy SEALs. But our most important customer is you, people who, like us, who enjoy those special personal times on the world's wild rivers in a Moravia boat. What makes a Moravia? A love for white water and a desire to build the most technologically advanced, durable boats on the river. Our design mission is to simplify, simplify. Eliminate glue, eliminate seams, build a better boat. In our 25,000 square foot manufacturing facility, we cut patterns from our revolutionary Class 6 fabric, the industry's toughest fabric. We use a unique process that produces a totally thermofused raft. We eliminate the seams by using high frequency and hot air welding equipment to fuse these high tech fabrics together. So, no more glued seams. Then we attach the D rings and handles for frame attachments and cargo tie down anchors by hand. Beyond our tough thermofused seam construction and class six fabric, we also add a final abrasion barrier to the surface, a process we call urethane seamless encapsulation. We apply a coat of special urethane, putting an extra thick coating on the two bottoms for protection from the river's sand and rocks, and on the top for a more durable buffer against frame wear. Our urethane offers extreme resistance to abrasion, more than 15 times the abrasion resistance of Hypalon and 40 times the abrasion resistance of PVC. It also contains more UV inhibitors than any other material on the market. This means that prolonged exposure to the sun will not cause the fabric to break down. Then our experienced production team hand builds the drop stitch self bailing floor. Our unique self bailing floors are flat. This key to our raft's performance is simple physics. A flat floor allows your raft to slide over the river's cross currents. A flat floor also reduces the resistance to movement that you feel when you take a stroke with your oar or paddle. A flat floor simply outperforms a rib floored raft. What makes our flat floor possible is the most remarkable material in the rafting world. It's called drop stitch. This material is so tough, it is used in the wings of F-111 and F-14 fighter planes. In every square foot of a Moravia floor, there are 5,000 equal length threads between the top and bottom layers. Equal length means that when inflated, 
the two layers separate a consistent distance of six inches over the entire floor. This creates the most efficient and durable floor available anywhere. Whether you're a recreational boater or a professional guide, your Moravia is built tough for years of boating enjoyment. We at Moravia hear some remarkable stories about the toughness of our rafts, and we'd like to pass along some practices we've learned over the years to help you maintain your raft. The most common problems with rafts are due to excessive high pressure and heat. Heat from the sun and the ground can drastically raise pressure and damage your raft. The recommended floor pressure is 1 to 1.5 psi and tube pressure is 1.5 to 2.5 PSI. You can check your pressure with a gauge, but a simple hand test will do as well. In big water, when you're concerned about flipping, you should run your floor very soft. It should feel like a standard floor, easily depressed by light hand pressure. This allows the floor to ride up higher inside the side tubes of the raft. The side tubes sit down lower in the water, so your center of gravity is lower. The raft tracks better, drains slower, carries more water, and has more weight to get you through the holes better. With heavier loads or in technical water requiring more maneuvering, the floor should be inflated to the upper end of the operating pressure, 1 to 1.5 psi. The floor is stiffer and flatter, displacing more water. This causes the side tubes to ride higher, making the raft easier to turn. Firm palm pressure will still slightly indent the floor. A rock-hard floor that cannot be indented is overpressurized. We test these floors to 5 PSI in the plant, but if you operate the floor beyond operating pressure, you're asking for trouble. Normal operating pressure on the side tube feels firm, but not rock-hard. Moderate pressure with your hand or knee should slightly indent the tube. Valves that are on the side tubes are constantly washed out, giving less chance for sand, dirt, and water to enter the tubes when the valve is open. The floor valve requires a little more care. Before opening, pour a bucket of clean water on the valve to wash the dirt and sand away. Then use the first few strokes on your pump to blow residual water and dirt from around the opening. Be sure to use your valve caps. The cap has a rubber O-ring built into it and is part of the air holding seal on your raft and floor. To operate the valve, remove the cap by rotating it one quarter turn clockwise, then pulling it towards you. A round plastic button, the poppet, is located inside the valve core. The poppet is mounted on a shaft that is spring loaded and attached to the round disc and O-ring inside the valve. This assembly forms the primary air holding seal. Using your index finger, you can push the poppet in to allow air to flow in or out of the raft. To remove air from the raft tubes or floor, push the poppet down and rotate it one quarter turn clockwise. This will set the valve in the locked open position. To return to the normal position, use your index finger to rotate the poppet one quarter turn counterclockwise. The spring will then set the valve in the closed position, preventing air from escaping. In the closed position, you can pump air into the raft or floor. Air pressure from your pump pushes the poppet, disc, and O-ring assembly down, allowing air to flow around them into the raft. During the return stroke on your pump, or after the pump is removed, the internal spring returns the poppet, disc, and O-ring assembly to the closed air holding position. Remember to replace the cap. The cap has an O-ring on its underside that adds additional air holding capability to the valve system. The preferred solution for cleaning your raft is good old soap, water, and elbow grease. A stiff bristle, non-metal scrub brush can help when removing ground and dirt. We see more repairs to rafts that have been damaged in transit than have been damaged on the river. Our rafts are known for being stiffer when inflated. It is one reason they handle better on the water. The trade-off is they fold a little bulkier, creating harder edges at the fold lines. You can eventually rub a hole in the raft from the side of your trailer or trunk as you bounce along a backcountry road headed for the river. That's why your raft comes with a tarp, and we recommend that you use it.
By choosing the toughest raw materials and using sound construction processes, we have removed most repair worries that boaters used to have on the river. However, even the toughest boat sometimes meets a tougher rock. Review your repair kit contents and instructions before each season. Check to be sure you have the complete list of items for the repair kit. Make sure your supplies are fresh. Remember, glue degrades with time and exposure to heat. So check your supply. Clear, slightly amber resin is okay. Catalyst that is dark brown and liquid is okay too. But cloudy resin and dried out catalyst are not usable. Double check these before extended trips. Always err on the side of caution to be sure you have fresh materials. Your encapsulated Moravia repairs just like a rubber or a Hypalon boat. Use the materials supplied in your Moravia repair kit. Follow the instructions and you'll be back on the river quickly. George Aragon, our president, knows a thing or two about building and repairing boats. He's been building boats for us since 1973 and lives by the rule, preparation and patience. Hi, let me show you how to do a basic repair. The boat or tear should be moved to a clean, dry, flat surface, preferably out of the sunlight. Place an ore box or piece of wood under the areas to be repaired to give a hard, flat surface to work the patch against. All repairs on the river should be made with the gray 3-inch bias tape that comes in your repair kit. Later, when you get home, you can use the same color material to make a much better looking patch. If the tear is more than 2 inches long, you may want to consider an inside patch. Use the bias tape for these inside patches also. Following the instructions in your manual, mix the glue with a catalyst in the plastic reusable cup and stir using the tongue depressor. The glue and the catalyst are pre-measured, so if you use half the glue, use half the catalyst. Quarter of the glue, quarter of the catalyst. Use the patch to trace around the area where it'll be applied. For repairs on the urethane surface, thoroughly sand the area first. The idea with sanding is to lightly roughen the glued surface and to create a better glue bond, not to completely remove the urethane coating. Clean both the area and the patch with cheesecloth dampened with MEK. Using the brush, apply a thin, even coat of glue to both the area and the patch. Let it dry about five minutes, then apply a second thin, even coat to the area and the patch. Make sure to take the time to apply glue in two very thin, even coats. And wait for the first coat to dry completely. Don't goober a ton of glue on your patch and boat. More glue does not mean a better bond. In fact, more glue usually means more air bubbles, which can result in a poor bond. Next, let the glued surface become tacky. Then, starting on one edge, lay the patch over the area and press it out with your hand. Then, using the pusher set at a 45 degree angle, push across the patch area to remove all air and set the patch. Work the edge of the pusher along any ridges formed by the underlying overlap materials. If the glued surface is dry before you can put them together, you can lightly wipe them with a damp cloth of MEK to reactivate. Wait until it gets tacky again, then apply the patch. Let the patch cure for one hour before use, and don't pump it up to full pressure for at least 12 hours. 
Here are some hints. Don't glue an area much larger than the patch. Exposed glue will darken with age and make a sloppy looking raft and patch. Be careful with the inside patch and don't glue the inside of the tube together. Take your time. Remember, a patch with a bias tape will hold air on the river. You can cover that tape later when you get back home. Here are some additional tips. Use caution when using the glue resin, catalyst, and solvents in your repair kit. Responsible use and disposal